just wanted to give everybody a thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching these videos subscribing commenting and to let y'all know i started a discord it's called think mob the link will be in the description for it wanted to talk about everything audio production and just random shit talking because that's what i'll be on so if you with it and i'm saying join spread the word tell a friend what's going on everybody it's skates everybody's been hitting me up asking me yo like how do i get my machine mk3 working inside of ableton 11 because it stopped working with the old script on ableton 10 and i've been like yo like i'm not a developer don't come at my neck i didn't <laughs> create this this ain't my system but i'm gonna show you how to do it a sovereign citizen one man band decided to go ahead and create a way on making it available to everybody whether you got a machine k3 you got the standalone machine plus or you got the micro you figure dummy which is fire it does cost 30 dollars for you to buy this script but it's worth it for you to be able to have the same functionality and this person didn't have to develop this at all they did it out of the kindness of their own heart um so pay the 30 dollars or more heavy on the or more they went out of their way to develop this by themselves so the website to get there is ln47.gumroad.com the page will come directly up you click on the main screen which is this one right here pay the 30 dollars or more once you finally do you'll get this screen here to show you all the updates different things in that regard only thing you need to worry about is this first one here click download download it to wherever it is that you want it to be at you know what i'm saying you need the native instruments controller editor for this to work the only way that you get that is by native access if you can't download it via na native access it's because you are riding dirty <laughs> if you ain't got native access then i can't help you but anyway i'm using mac i'm not using pc i know i used to do everything on pc i'm using mac now so i'm gonna be showing this via mac i'll open up the manual and show you how to install it to that actual folder inside of ableton and on your desktop for pc let's go to the user manual and i have the mk3 give you two different themes that's fire too all right so bless it though for my windows people this is the file directory that you need to go to to be able to uh, copy and paste the folder which is normally users, your name, documents, Ableton, user library, unless you change it on live's preferences as it says, right? You wanna make sure that the remote scripts folder is there. If it's not there, you want to create an empty folder with the name remote scripts inside of your user library. It's normally there though, because any other controllers that you have, even the ones that you don't have, they're already set and listed there. That's the reason why Ableton is so plug and play, right? But that's where it is that you want to uh, copy and paste the folder. The folder is going to be inside of the download folder when you grabbed it. It's going to be called uh, machine underscore MK3. I'm sorry, micro underscore MK3 underscore unofficial. You just want to copy this whole folder. And on Mac, I'm going to open a new finder window. I'm going to go to applications, right click, go to show package contents click contents click app resources and then you want to click MIDI remote scripts right click and paste it here right now this is where it is if you downloaded and installed Ableton to your main hard drive if you have it on a different hard drive or you have it in a completely different place for whatever reason then of course it's gonna be a different place right and the second thing you want to do is grab the template script for whichever version or controller that you have because again this don't just work for the mk3 it also works for the micro mk3 and for the machine plus so i got the machine mk3 i'm going to grab this and then you want to drag and drop this into your controller editor right right there now i don't have to do it again because i already have it right the next thing you want to do is open up live right command comma to open up preferences um i think it's control comma and windows to do the same exact thing you want to go directly to link tempo midi under control surface you want to choose micro mk3 unofficial v160 now even though you got the machine mk3 or you got the machine plus you still want to choose this that's just what they titled the folder don't worry about that it's going to be cool under input, you want to choose machine MK3 virtual input. Um, for Windows, I believe it's the one that says like CTRL stands for control at the end. Same exact thing. 
output you're going to choose the same exact thing again same exact way for windows as well choose the one that just says ctrl on the end under midi ports you want to make sure that machine mk3 track sync remote mpe uh, is on um, you want to make sure all of these are checked for where it says unofficial underscore v160 input and then same exact thing for output um, then same exact thing for output for the v160 make sure everything is checked here right all right so now that you got it installed we're going to show you how everything works and how everything handles itself inside of ableton so to be able to get it working inside of ableton you need to put the device inside of midi mode um, and you do that by pressing shift and this button in the top right corner here which is uh, MIDI. I think it's also like restart or something like that, but you click these two buttons here and that'll put it in MIDI mode, right? You restart whatever loop that you have planned. Minimize this some. Restart a loop is shift and play. Right? Clip triggering. So to activate a clip, you wanna click the pattern button. Any clip that you wanna activate you just press that pad corresponding with it right to create a new clip same exact way you would do on a push you click the scene right underneath and it'll automatically start recording if there's nothing on that scene right to duplicate a clip so let's say i have this clip here that i want to duplicate click the duplicate button and it'll duplicate this pattern over top of this pattern or this clip over top of this clip you want to double the length of a clip if you click shift and double it'll double the actual length of a clip no different than if you were to come over here and click this duplicate button if you want to erase a clip you click the clip and then you click the erase button and it'll get rid of it so to navigate through all of the clips that you have click and hold the shift button and rotate the encoder to move up and down if I rotate the encoder left and right, it'll show me left and right what my patterns are. Whether it be audio clips, other kinds of clips, all of them will show up here and they'll correspond in that same exact way. Scene triggering is by clicking the scene button. It works the same exact way. So all of the scenes correspond as they would if you were using the push. So I have entirely too many scenes just so I can test out how it looks and how it works. So if my calculations are right, 16 should be this 18th scene because I have 18 scenes, right? If I scroll all the way to the beginning, this first scene should be scene one, and it is. In that same exact regard, if you want to delete scenes, choose the scene that you want to delete, and then click delete or erase. And that'll begin erasing scenes so you have the amount of scenes that you want track selection you click select and then you choose the track that you want to arm so i have this op1 i want to click select and click track two because that's the track that it has on and you can see that it armed and that it highlight if i choose any other tracks it'll select those tracks corresponding if you want arm track mode to stay pinned you click shift and select right so you can choose different tracks that you want to arm if you want to create a new track from here you can select any one of these pads that aren't highlit with any other color right so that'll create a midi track that just created a midi track if you want to create an audio track you click and hold down select and shift and then you click one of the pads shift select and then 11 and that just created an audio track that's cool if you want to erase tracks click erase and then it'll automatically delete if you hold it down though it should delete the track that you want to you wanted to delete and it does works that way cool solo and mute so let's go back to pattern mode actually let's go to scene we'll play scene one So if I wanted to solo, if I click solo and hold it down, it'll allow me to solo individual tracks.
You can solo multiple tracks as well. If you wanted to mute, same exact thing. You feel me? If you want to change the volume of a selected track, you want to hold the volume button down and turn the encoder. So let's say this OP1 is too loud. There we go. Oh, and it'll actually show you like how loud it is. That's kind of cool. All right, so using it for drum rack, you want to make sure you click select, make sure the track that you have drum rack on is selected. So for me, that's track three, the one that I have the drums on. Make sure everything is armed. I'm going to record by clicking record. You can solo and activate mute, activate all of the individual pads by clicking the mute button and clicking one of the drums that you have in the rack or sounds that you have in the rack. I guess it's if you want the colors to show up inside of the drum rack, then you use pad mode. If you don't really care about that, then just go to keyboard mode, right? Let's say we throw a dumbass drum or something all the way up here on E8 for some odd reason, right? The way you navigate through that is by scrolling up and down when you're using a drum rack. So trigger and MIDI notes, note triggering. So you want to click select, select the track that you have either a plugin on or if you're using a one shot or wherever it is that you're doing, select that track. You want to click keyboard mode. Even if you click pad mode, it'll automatically throw you in keyboard mode, right? Now, if you want to change the key, hold shift, rotate the encoder. That's going to change the key. If you want to change the root note, hold down the encoder, rotate left and right. And that'll allow you to change the root note. If you want to change the octave, rotate the encoder up and down without pushing it down. All of your shift functions work on the machine the same way you would use them inside of machine by pressing shift and then clicking one of the pads. So if you want to undo anything that you recorded, if you have a track that you added, anything that you did last, clicking shift and undo will undo that. Clicking shift and redo will redo that, of course. Um, if you want to quantize by 50%, that works. If you want to nudge notes, if you want to nudge notes, click a shift and nudge will nudge them over depending on the grid value that you set. Now, I don't know if there's a way to set the grid value. If they have that on here, then that'd be fire. Um, if you want to clear, you can hit undo. If you want to copy. Let's say if I set the marker here, if I click control paste, and yeah, okay. So that's what I figured. I'll never use that. <laughs> if you want to move what it is that you recorded up and down by a semitone, that works by clicking, neck, clicking uh, octave down, which is 15, octave up is 16, which is cool. Metering mode, which is basically just going to be your mixer mode. So. And I like the feedback. Like you can see my vocal, I have my voice as you can see on track one. And I guess if you select the track by going over to it, it'll allow you to use the encoder to turn it down. Oh, and you can see it going up and down as well. So you got to hold the volume button down on the track that you want to boost or drop. Events mode. So if you hold events down and select the individual like notes, it'll allow you to be able to select them all, which is cool. 
I guess you can use that. You can use this for if you need to like nudge notes. You can change the root note when events mode is active by holding down the encoder and scrolling up and down. So I guess that would be for in a situation where you got notes playing. All right, so note repeat. So this works by holding down a button, pressing a pad, and it goes up to 164 just like machine does. So it only works inside of drum racks. It doesn't work outside of, oh, it does. Um, tempo is changed by holding down the tempo button and scrolling up and down. Changing the quantization of the swing amount. Oh, so you could swing from here as well. That's cool. That work. That's cool. They did their homework. Tap tempo is done by pressing the tap tempo button. If you want to turn the uh, metronome on and off, you click the shift button and click the tap button. But if you just want to tap the tempo while you click it that way. You can capture MIDI from here, which is cool. Yeah. All right, so you can capture MIDI by clicking the notes button, which is Damn, that's fire. That's the one. Yep. Change selected or all notes velocity to 100. So you can't change it to 127, but you can change it to 100. I normally do everything at 127 just because I like that crunch. But that's shift and fixed level. Shift and perform to switch between a range of view and live view. Yeah. Taco device between clip and detail view. Clip and detail view. Oh, yeah. Yep. So that's everything that you can do using this machine MK3 script inside of Ableton 11. It's fire. It gives you a lot of control over parameters that you didn't have control over um, inside of the one that was actually native instruments made, um, which is cool. It reminds me a lot. And I wonder if they took some of the programming and the coding and encompassed it inside of this version. It reminds me of how it was back on the machine MK2. Um, a lot of it, a lot of the functionality works that way. And it's great. I like it. So I'm saying round of applause for the homie LM47. We appreciate you. Again, my name is Skase and I'm out of here, man. Y'all be blessed.